Hello everyone, I'm here at Roger Stern. Roger, how's it going today? I'm having a great time, how about you? I can't complain, this is a fun show. Absolutely, Terrificon's a great show. Um, yesterday you were part of a panel about the 80 years of you know, Superman action comics. What's your biggest takeaway from you know, just Superman being able to be here for 80 years and how he's still you know, some people's favorite superhero? Well, because he's just a great, great character and he spawned an entire industry of superheroes, really. Uh, superheroes make up not all of comics, but a major portion of them. That's where they started. Started in, in comic books, went to comic strips, went to radio, went to serials, went to animated features, went to f full features, the, the internet, games, everywhere, and Superman led the way. He was the first. And, you know, being in, you know, games and TV and movies, uh, one story that they kind of keep going back to is the death of Superman. You know, it's featured in Batman vs. Superman. They just made the, you know, animated Blu-ray Blu for it. Uh, what are your thoughts on how that story's been able to remain, you know, relevant in the public eye and some people's favorite uh, story? Uh, I think it was because we treated it seriously. I mean, there'd been death of Superman stories before. I can think of at least three or four from when I was a kid reading Superman. Uh, I think it was uh, Jerry Siegel wrote the first like imaginary death of Superman story where Supergirl takes over at the end and Luther is you know, tried in, in the city of Candor for killing Superman and all this. Great story, you know, but you can do it just once. And that's why it was an imaginary story back during the Mort Weisinger era. And one of the things we would occasionally do to come up with story ideas at the Superman summits when we were all getting together, all the artists and writers who worked on Superman, to put together stories or story ideas or springboards for the next year was, you know, what did, did Mort do right and how can we make it better and, and treat it seriously? Not, maybe not quite as goofy and when we, you know, we were going to Mary Clark and Lois and we had to delay that because of the upcoming Lois and Clark TV series. Fine. <laughs> what else can we do? You know, and Jerry Ordway does the, his, his usual, we can always kill him. You know, and, and, and Dan goes, yeah, we could, we could kill him. And, and Mike Carlin says, okay, wise guys, suppose you kill Superman. What next? And we thought, well, you know, in the old uh, Jerry Siegel, Kurt Swan story, this happened, that, but there would be bigger ramifications. You know, in that story, we saw two panels of people mourning, or, or a page or whatever it was. It would be a big deal if Superman was, was, was killed, especially if he was killed, like, saving the city of Metropolis. Wow! You know, like, that has ramifications worldwide, not just his friends, his family who are bereft, but every, everyone looks up to Superman. I mean, in real life, whenever there's a tragedy, you'll occasionally hear someone saying, you know, you know I wish there'd been a Superman. He could have come in and saved the day. People would like there to be a Superman. I'd like there to be a Superman. There isn't, so we have to do the best we can. But in the context of the stories, wow. You know, that's bigger than a presidential assassination. It's, it's as big as a natural disaster. It's huge, and the ramifications are felt worldwide. And I think because we took the time and the space and the issues to deal with that, people appreciated that and took it to heart. Definitely. Uh, and now next year, or January 2018 or 19, um, they're doing the Reign of Superman, you know, with a yeah. part two to Death of Superman. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? And also, did you by any chance see the Blu-ray of Death of Superman yet? I haven't seen it yet. I've seen the trailer mm -hmm. and, and some uh, scene cells, which look really great. And everyone who's been by and has seen it says, oh, you got to see this. It's really great. Okay, I'm looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. and, and the nice thing, we have to wait just half a year to yeah. find out. It was, that was my only real frustration with the third Avengers movie. It's like, oh no, now I have to wait a year to find out what happens next. You only have to wait like six months on this. Yeah. Okay, whew, that's not... Plus, I sort of know how the story comes out. And uh, you have Terrificon now. Do you have any shows coming up or you just kind of taking it easy? I'm taking it easy for the rest of the year. Next year, we'll see. I'll probably be doing Ithacon in Ithaca, New York uh, next uh, spring. I think that's uh, like the last weekend in March or something. But, uh, you know, and, and 
everyone who puts on a convention who is here has been by, would you like to come to the convention? Well, I have to stick my schedule, I don't know. <laughs> well, how about next month? No, I can't do next month. I have, I have plans for next month, but you know, see me in a year, we'll figure something out. Awesome, Roger, thank you so much for your time, appreciate thank it. Thank you, sir.